News from the Supreme Court means the end of the owner-operator model as we know it in California, and it could have repercussions nationwide. At the tail end of a Supreme Court session, almost as an afterthought, the court said it would not hear a case about whether California's AB5 law was unconstitutional. And that's not good news for owner-operators and the trucking fleets that depend on them. I'm Managing Editor Vesna Brykovich, and today on HGT Talks Trucking, I'm talking to Editor-in-Chief Deborah Lockridge, who has been following this story since the law first raised its head in 2019. But before we dig in, don't forget to subscribe to HGT Talks Trucking on YouTube or the audio version on your favorite podcast platforms. And check out our social media channels on Twitter, LinkedIn, and Facebook. Time is money, and that's why Catscale built the Way My Truck app. Your drivers can complete their entire way without ever leaving the cab. They'll see their weights on their mobile device or tablet, and scale tickets can be automatically emailed to you. With a fleet profile, you can save back office time as well. No driver reimbursements. And you'll have access to report data. Find out more at waymytruck.com. Now let's talk about the controversial California law. Deborah, why is this such a big story? Well, it affects so many people. Let me put it this way. The first story I did on this topic in 2019, and the headline, California bill means end for independent trucking in the state. Uh, the California Trucking Association said it would affect 70,000 truckers operating as independent contractors. And that article, by the way, is our top story of all time, which is an indication of just how important and far-reaching this decision might be. Yeah, and just so our viewers and listeners can understand, we post multiple articles and news stories daily on our website, truckinginfo.com. So for that story to still constantly rank on the top of our content speaks to just how much impact it could have. But just to kind of back to the basics, what exactly is AB5? So AB5 is short for Assembly Bill 5, which was a law passed by California State Legislature and signed by California's governor in the fall of 2019. What that law did was it codified a California Supreme Court decision that changed how you determine who's an independent contractor versus who's an employee. And the law set up what's known as an ABC test, which means you have to meet all three conditions of this test, A and B and C, in order to be considered an independent contractor. And the big problem for trucking was the B requirement. It says that the independent contractor or the worker has to perform work that is outside the usual course of the employer's business. So a trucking fleet could use an independent contractor to do their landscaping, but having them you know, deliver freight, which is something that trucking company is part of their business, essentially most people believe that's going to make it impossible for motor carriers in the state to use the traditional trucking owner operator model. That makes sense to me, but why did lawmakers feel like this law was necessary in the first place? So there are instances where companies misclassify workers that should be employees, but they call them independent contractors so they can avoid things like paying minimum wage and overtime, requ uh, required meal and rest breaks and workers' compensation and other benefits. Uh, yes, it has also happened in trucking. My first eight years covering the industry was writing for owner operators and drivers, and I did hear some horror stories about some situations. And five years ago, USA Today did a big expose on the issue at the Southern California ports. But you know, while it is an issue, critics felt like this new law, AB5, really went overboard in trying to address the issue with such a broad approach instead of addressing like specific practices that, that can lead to the abuse that they were concerned about. And how does something like this even end up at the Supreme Court, though? Ah, well, you know, lots of legal stuff. Um, so California Trucking Association, after the law was passed, filed a lawsuit challenging it as it applies to trucking, saying that it should be preempted by the supremacy and commerce clauses in the U.S. Constitution and by the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Act and the Federal Aviation Administration Authorization Act of 1994. Um, those letter to 
laws ban states from enacting laws that affect a motor carrier's prices, routes, and services. So uh, they filed suit. The AB5 law was set to go into effect on January 1st, 2020. In the final hours of New Year's Eve, literally the final hours, a district judge issued a temporary restraining order preventing state officials from enforcing the law against motor carriers because basically that judge agreed that uh, they felt that the California Trucking Association had a a good case there. Um, But although later that year, a court did agree with that judge and ruled in favor of California Trucking, on appeal, that was reversed by a, a panel of an appeals court, federal appeals court. Um, so the California Trucking Association at that point petitioned to have the Supreme Court review the case, but the court decided it wasn't going to take it up. So at this point, uh, that means a case will be kicked back to the district court to look at, but the restraining order that's been in effect is being rescinded. So AB5 will be in effect for trucking in California. So in general, I know you've been covering this story for a long time, as you said, and I'm sure you've been keeping track of how people and associations have been responding. What do you think has been the general reaction by the trucking industry? Uh, Yeah, for most part, not real happy. Um, The (laughs) California Trucking Association issued a statement saying, quote, gasoline has been poured on the fire that is our ongoing supply chain crisis. The impact of taking tens of thousands of truck drivers off the road will have devastating repercussions on an already fragile supply chain, increasing costs and worsening runaway inflation. For instance, take the port of Oakland. Uh, According to Bill Abudi, owner of AB Trucking in Oakland, who's also on our editorial advisory board, some 90% of the 9,000 trucks that serve the port of Oakland are operated by independent contractors. Now, his company uses employee drivers, but he has relied on independent contractors to handle his overflow business and now he's not going to be able to do that and the owner operative independent drivers association which often is on the opposite sides of a lot of issues from motor carrier groups isn't happy about it either uh you know owner operators are in owner operators because they want to be independent they don't want to be employees uh who is happy is the teamsters union uh, teamsters have been really behind this push about misclassification they want to organize port truck drivers and they can't do that if those drivers are independent contractors. So we hear all of this and I'm sure some viewers and listeners are thinking, you know, as a motor carrier, what um, in that state, what should they do or what can they do? Yeah. Um, well, the safest thing, I've been talking to some attorneys about it. Uh, safest thing as far as the law is concerned would be basically to stop using owner operator truck drivers and make all their drivers employees. Some have already done that, but it's easier said than done, uh, especially when drivers are hard to find as it is right now. And most owner operators, as I said, don't even want to be employees in the first place. They bought their own truck because they want to be independent. Beyond that, there are a couple other possible options, but it's a gray area. One might be for motor carriers to pivot to being a logistics company, like a broker or a freight forwarder. with the idea that a broker or a freight forward is not in the same business as a motor carrier. And then they could use owner operators and other small motor carriers to deliver goods. But there's concern that even that might be frowned on by California courts who might not agree that those are separate businesses. Um, in fact, uh, Joe Rockavots with Western States Trucking Association told me his group has a small broker member already involved in an employment case where the state auditor has decided that those one truck incorporated motor carriers that broker is using are employees. Uh, And his group has been helping a growing number of members to move out of the state. Um, There's also a business to business exception in AB5 that might apply. You still would have to prove that independent contractors are not employees, but under a different standard called the Borello test. Uh, but it's not as stringent as the ABC test. There, are, You have to meet a certain number of 13 different factors, like usually a majority of them, seven or so, um, such as having a written contract, having a business license, and working for other customers, not just that contracting motor carrier. So that's a brief rundown on AB5. We could talk about it all day. Uh, that was our top news story from June. Vesna, give us a rundown on the number two and three stories from June. Thanks so much, Deborah, for that overview. 
Our second top story from June was a welcome back to trailer manufacturer Fruhoff. So Fruhoff has not manufactured or assembled trailers in the U.S. for the past 25 years. It closed its last plant in 1997 and has been in Mexico ever since, but they're back. Uh, the company has opened a $15 million production facility in Bowling Green, Kentucky, and it'll that'll provide about 290 jobs. About 75 of them have already been filled, and they'll be assembling dry van trailers. Our other top story was how Cummins is making a bold but practical statement towards its emission goals. So Cummins invited recently a group of transportation journalists to its headquarters in Columbus. Our very own Jack Roberts and Jim Park were there, and that's how this story came to be. So as a corporation, Cummins has said that it intends to take a leadership role in battling climate change globally, and the company has been very vocal recently about its new mission, um, which includes the company has said um, it's set to unveil a new generation of smaller displacement heavy duty diesel engines, as well as battery electric, hydrogen, and hybrid powertrains. All right. Thanks, Vesna. A couple of uh, long story names in the business there, <laughs> Cummins and Fruhoff. Um, I'm sure we could dig something out of our archives on those. Sure. So that's it for this episode of HTT Talks Trucking. You can stay up to date on all the latest news at our website, truckinginfo.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and the audio podcast. You can subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. Thanks for listening. <laughs>